Hi guys, this is Ed and welcome to The Outer Dark. Some people call them demons or demonic possessions. Some people call them fallen angels and some say it's just a massive government MKUltra experiment. But whatever it is, there's no doubt that after decades of research there is a phenomenon, whether aliens, demons or something else, that has caused many to risk public ridicule by stating that they have been, in fact, abducted by aliens. So stay tuned as The Outer Dark brings you 10 things we know about the alien abduction phenomenon. Number 10. First some context, the alien abduction phenomenon is a phenomenon within human behavior and sociological systems where a group of the population witness the same series of events and share a very similar narrative, a high number of whom seem to have an RH negative blood type, at least according to those that are within the phenomenon, a blood type that is absent any relationship to a primate ancestor, as 85% of the rest of the population share. Their testimony of this event is is not reported by hypnosis alone, but there are many abductees or experiences of this phenomenon who remember the events without the aid of any psychological techniques such as hypnosis or psychotherapy. It stems from the core universal event where in most cases a percentage of the population experiences events of missing time that they cannot account for, but years later or through the aid of hypnosis they suddenly remember what has happened to them as if a veil has been lifted from their eyes and their memory returns and so does a string of narrative that it would seem many of the population share. Number 9. So what is this narrative? Well to oversimplify it, it consists of a feeling in most cases like the subject is being watched and that there's some kind of feeling of impending dread. Something is about to happen, they feel it they know it. They have a strong feeling they are being watched. At this point, if they are in a location such as a public place, they might feel the need to go suddenly camping, or go to a forest or a very more remote location. At this point, they either have no memory of the event, or an event of missing time, or a strange feeling that part of their memory has been edited from their history. Number 8. Here, if they remember the event in most cases, they report the similar narrative. That narrative being, being taken into some kind of craft, room or location where they have to look into the eyes of a creature, such as the classical grey alien, which has a skin or suit that has a honeycomb texture to it. This is a powerful effect which is called the steering procedure that leaves the abductee helpless and overpowered. At this point, the memories of the abductees is largely fragmented. They cannot remember exactly what happens. They have a mismatch of memories, but with the general overtone that something incredibly stressful and bad happen to them. What they remember is there's some kind of usually a medical procedure. If the abductees are female, there might be a medical procedure involving some type of fertility treatment. They might also be asked to hold a baby, although the reasoning behind this is largely unknown. They might see children on the craft or children that look partly alien. They will be seated in front of large screens. Sometimes these screens display patterns or pictures that have an emotional quality to them, as if emotionality is being inserted into their mind with the pictures. There is also a strong emphasis on the environment. Abductees in a number of cases have been shown pictures of the environment being destroyed and they must work to protect the planet in some way. Now you might think this is a good message, and maybe it is, but the overall arch of abduction research says that this message is in effect keeping the planet secure for the next generation. Not the actual generation that exists on it now, but the small percentage of generation or abductees that will survive some kind of coming apocalypse. So it could all this be fantasy? Well, the best way to really get a gauge of what is happening is to actually listen to an abductee's testimony for yourself. That is the most famous abductee testimony that is available, and that is the tape recorded regression sessions of someone called Barney Hill, who was part of the Barney and Betty Hill abduction case. Have a listen. I want to wake up. You're not going to wake up. You're in deep sleep. You're comfortable. Relaxed. This is not going to trouble you. Go on. You can remember everything now. It's right over my right. 
God. What is it? And I try to maintain control so Betty cannot tell I am scared. God, I'm scared. It's all right. You can go right on and experience it. It will not hurt you now. I got to get my gun. Oh! I got my gun! Number seven. So what other evidence is there apart from witness testimony that something's really going on? Well, in fact, the abductees, and this is missed by most mainstream media, are in fact missing physically from the location as reported by third party witnesses. This is what makes the experiences of alien abductions different. They are not in the location. They are not physically there. They often also return with scars on them, with markings that can only be described as those obtained from some kind of physical abuse. Number six, there are also lesser known reports confirmed by other abductees that abductees also return with a strange fluorescent dye on their skin that cannot be washed off. Now, note that although this is actual more testimony, the fact that it is cumulative comes from a large group and is cross-referenced within the larger populace by unrelated witnesses does leave credence that this is something that is going on. Number five, also reported widely, especially by Dr. Roger Lear, who has been working with abductees for decades is that a number of abductees seem to have foreign implants in them. Implants that seem to grow using the body's own biological systems as types of construction material as a factory to develop these implants. These implants act in the similar way than, than the implants given to livestock or cattle or the types that veterinarians give to pets. They seem to be a quick scanning method to extract information on the subject. Number four, but has there been any serious study of this phenomenon by respected scholars? Well, yes there has been, most notably by the Pulitzer Prize winning author and esteemed Harvard psychiatrist Dr. John Mack, who was on the board of psychiatry at Harvard at one time and is an esteemed, widely respected psychiatrist. He was convinced enough by the abduction phenomenon to literally destroy his reputation by reporting it on a number of media outlets. Take a look. Something significant and real is going on here. Dr. John Mack, Harvard professor of psychiatry, a Pulitzer Prize winner, and author of the book, Abduction, Human Encounters with Aliens has found its way from we know not what reality and is entering into our physical space and affecting the lives of, in our country alone, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. It is altogether like a real event in that person's life. It's not like an hallucination. It's not like delusion. It's not like fantasy. It's not like a dream. It is like something that really happened while many scientists refuse to believe the thousands of alien abduction stories surfacing, through Pierre, Mack has personally investigated many. A 1994 sighting by 62 school children in South Africa led Mack to conduct a full on-site investigation, shown recently on Fox 25 on the show Sightings. It was silver, and the ring around it was red. It was red. Did light come from the whole thing? Or there are lights around here. Lights along the edge there. Although these children had not been exposed to popular media accounts of UFOs, their stories parallel accounts heard in many parts of the world. 
He never said anything. It's just that the face has the eyes. They looked horrible. While Mac at first received quite a bit of grief from the scientific community and Harvard colleagues over his research, the climate has changed somewhat. At Harvard now, we're in the process of putting together a multidisciplinary working group to, to study just how do we look into a phenomenon that crosses disciplines, that's anomalous, that doesn't fit what we're uh, taught is real. Number three, so what's going on? Well, according to numerous researchers, including Professor Dr. David Jacobs from Templeton University, there is some kind of mass integration or breeding program going underway. Now you can call this a breeding program conducted by fallen angels, demons, the military, or aliens. But that is in fact the main hypothesis, that there's some kind of program going on where these entities are trying to crossbreed themselves with the rest of the human population. But but perhaps the most ominous part of this is the fact that Dr. David Jacobs says that this program is not only in its third stage, is actually coming to an end. Dr. David Jacobs states that now abductees are actually helping a type of human alien hybrid cross called a hubrid actually integrate directly into society, signifying a major change in the program. He states before he hadn't seen this before, so this is something new, and also states that there is a coming into the program that the objective has almost been completed. Number two, Dr. David Jacobs believes this program came into effect within this century, at least in its current stages, given the polls taken in the early 1990s, which projected that a certain percentage of the population might be as high as 6% that actually experienced the abduction phenomenon. This would mean that it had to be fairly recent since abductees are multi-generational. So if this happened any earlier, then the entire percentage would have to be higher, much higher in fact, probably the entire populace. So given that it's only 6%, Dr. Javid Jacobs concludes that this actual phenomenon has likely happened uh, far later in human history. Number one, probably the most infamous part of this is what Dr. David Jacobs found, and that is a certain screen memory and a large number of his patients. That is a mononarrative repeated across his patients of the abduction phenomenon. A memory that was hidden so deep it seemed like a deep psychological implant. A later memory to in fact be aggravated at a certain time. In this memory, all abductees reported the same narrative, that they at one later stage were going to act as some kind of mass form of crowd control. That is, all this psychological screen memory would actually come into effect at a certain time, where they'd have to control the human populace. They'd have to walk out on the street and put out their hands and tell everyone it's going to be okay, everything's going to be fine. Take a look. Then people began to be much more specific about what they would be doing in the future on a lot of what they were doing was crowd control. Standing on a sidewalk saying, move along, move along, it'll be okay, don't worry, everything is all right, just keep moving, move in this direction, move that way. And I had a whole bunch of tell me, people telling me that this, that this is what they're gonna be doing. And I talked to a person who has a PhD in English, telling me, well, that's what she's gonna be doing, she's gonna be standing on a corner directing people. And I'm talking to a person who is a, a junior high school, middle school dropout telling me the same exact story. Well, they'll be standing directly, but they don't know particularly where, why, but they have to, this is what they know that they'll be doing. Plus a whole variety of other things. Those are just two, an example. So what is going on? Is this some kind of mass mind control experiment that was projected by some deep state entity like MKUltra or Project Monarch? Or is all this real? Are we really being interfered with some kind of demonic entities derived straight from the Bible or other religious historical texts? Or is this just some kind of fantasy, some kind of deep human phenomenon, a strange phenomenon that we do not actually understand yet? Well, in my opinion, it seems like something real is going on. It is true that in all the evidence, it's all witness testimony, at least mostly, which is weak by nature. But it is also true that there's an overwhelming 
amount of it with millions of people providing witness testimony that this happened to them that it was a real event but maybe the biggest clue that something real is going on is not the abductees themselves but as dr john max states that we don't have the actual sensory apparatus to even entertain this idea we haven't developed the actual psychological mechanism in order to actually observe it understand it and actually be able to quantify it this of course could be constructed by some kind of deep state mk ultra program using mass media and propaganda but it also could have been designed within us to make sure that we never actually see the walls of the prison that we're within we don't actually know that there's bars that surround us that were cattle being led towards some kind of truck to be taken away somewhere a kind of cattle ranch where the people actually questioning the ideas that the actual farmer takes them away that they're really within a farm actually are all crazy well at the end of the day you guys have to decide for yourselves of course just go out and do your own research take a look and form your own opinion what i tell you is just what i find the dots that i connect it does not mean by any standards that i'm right or correct in fact it's more likely that you will find something different if you look into this anyway if you do let me know in the comments section any comments with at all i do love reading your guys comments every day i like to look at them and read them and see what's really going on and also if you did like the video guys please do give it a thumbs up that would literally help me out to no end and in the meantime guys this is ed from the outer dark and i hope to see you next time and thanks for watching and i'll see you later